Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Social Sunday and um, fan Q&A. Um, with us today, we've got um, former Leeds uh, centre forward, Trezor Kandor, uh, someone that I know personally. Um, we previously had like uh, Loa Loa on the show. He was the first per first um, sort of uh, Congolese to come out of East London into the professional scene. Trezor Kandor is the second. And... Um, it's a privilege to have Trezor on here um, to hear his insight um, regarding uh, his progression within the football industry in England. Uh, Trezor, tell me about your, um, your 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 childhood, how um, how we started in living in East London and going to Rokeby School. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me, P. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, what can I say? It's like I started playing football really was back home, back in France, because I grew up in France basically before I come to England. I grew up in France, and uh, I think I came to England in '94. I came in '94, and uh, it was hard at the beginning. It was harder because of the language in that. I mean, the language barrier. Yeah, you know how it is, isn't it? So it was difficult. <laughs> it was difficult. Yeah, then to football, it was just in school, just school, just playing football. Obviously, I was playing football in France. I was playing basically in the same club as Lilium Turam. Oh. Obviously, we was like on the nines, on the eighth, and, and stuff like that. But he was like just getting into the first team. It was in Fontainebleau, that's the area where I grew up. And he got moved from Fontainebleau to Monaco. He got moved from there, and he got scattered. And then pff, that's the only person I can remember. Then I came to England. In England, as you know, uh, back then it was just we got to the area, to the East London, straight to East London, you know, and uh, straight to Canning, Canning Town, you know, how old, <laughs> Canning Town, CT all day. So how, yeah, how, how was how was that comparison to France? So obviously you played in two countries at young age. How how was the both of them? No, back then you can't tell. It was you couldn't tell. You're just young. I was like I think I was like nine nine something like that. i can't remember i was like nine or nine or eight so i couldn't really remember the difference there was not you ain't got time to be thinking about the difference it was the only thing you think about the first thing it was just the language the language because you come into a country and you just can't speak to anyone again to school remember the first day going to school i was crying i'm like can you imagine the whole day in a classroom and you didn't hear one word and you hear people talking laughing talking and laughing the teacher talking and don't can't understand a word that's what it was at the beginning. The beginning was nothing to do with football, really. It was just even then when 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 it was in France, it was just you're a kid. You just get into the club, a local club, just playing around, messing around. It's just you wasn't really thinking about being a footballer. You know, them ones there, you was just playing around and messing around. Coming to England, you can't that's not a difference I'll make. My difference was nothing to do with it. It was just more about the language. And um, going back to your first question, it was when I came to England, it was just playing around in in a in an area, just messing around, just playing with friends. And uh, in school, that's when people started to realize who I was really was in school. Obviously, in the area, in the area, I remember we had, obviously, we all grew up with Fabrice, you know, Wilson, all um, Patrick, you know, you know, you know, the whole the whole family kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I had Luau, Abdul, all of us growing up. And then you, yourself. <laughs> you know what? Do you know what I thought? Yeah. In particular... Um, yeah. Back in um, in those sort of days, um, growing up, I think you 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 was about four four years older than me, right? You was about four years older than me. I don't know how old you are, you know. To be fair, P. And are you I saying you are four? Old? You're, you're a year older than Patrick, so you're. Um, four... I'm a year older than Patrick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're four years older than me. Yeah. And, and um, when I used to watch your year group play, it was so competitive. Literally. Are you talking about in an area, in an area, or as a whole in... that year group? Because I think that year group was, um, I think that year group was was it the foe? The foe? Yeah, the foe. Jermaine Leon Kevin. Knight. Leon Knight. Leon Knight. People yeah, forget that... about Leon Knight. This that guy. Is... I'll get to the point here about this guy. What well, this guy? I'll get to the point. Leon Knight. Back then, we had Joe Cole. Yeah. We had uh, the guy that just left Manu as a as a manager just now, Michael Carrick. Michael, Michael Carrick. Yeah. We had 
boy, we had Alexander. He was playing for West Ham. This time he was more of a West Ham the player. The West Ham players because the academy was very strong. Very strong, yeah. yeah very no, strong. I, used to go and I remember during the fall, during the fall, he got moved to West Ham, but he came from Charlton. Charlton, yeah. I think he got moved for like a million, and this boy was like fifteen. Yeah. yeah. So how, 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 that generation, it was really about football. We had a. Oh, we had so many. Oh, mate. But that generation, we had a lot of bowlers, a lot of bowlers from East London. And um, it was difficult to break through. But still, at the time, I wasn't thinking about being a bowler. I weren't. I wasn't really. I was just playing football. I didn't know how to get there. I think the fact that I didn't know how am I going to become a footballer, I didn't know how it worked to become a footballer. So I was like, yeah, obviously, if it happens, it happens. But if it really doesn't happen, I don't really mind, you know what I'm saying? I didn't really, I wasn't really fussy about football like that. So it was, we was playing around in the area. And then I was playing in the school. Then in the school, people started to realize who I was. Your name started moving around because of the football. Because obviously I'm coming from France, I can't speak the language. But people knew who I was because everyone was talking about you back. Because your football was talking at your place, you know what I'm saying? We'll get to the games. I started playing from school. And straight away, obviously, your talent just pops. You can't hide that. Your talent just pops. And uh, I remember in my school, my people was like, I had talks. Talks. Ola Depot. He's actually, he works for Sky Sports right now. Oh, really? And talks is really, he was really that. Like, that's the people that really pushed me, that helped me a lot when I came, when I first came to school. And we are Alton. We are Alton. Alton Farewell. He went to play for Tottenham. So he was in our, in our age group now. He was the first man that got scattered to a professional club. As he was at school, he went to Tottenham. And he was the same year as Ledley King, all the men's there. And they had a sick youth team. That's all from East London, I'm saying. So East London, he was popping. And then, then how did I get to football? It was I was playing for Ripaway, actually. Then I just, someone just, I don't know how I got to Ripaway. I really don't remember how I got to Ripaway. I think someone took me there. I really can't remember who took me to Ripley. That's a Sunday team. You know, I, don't, I don't know if you remember Ripley. No, I don't remember it. It was like a Sunday team. It was down Beckton. We used to play our matches down near Beckton Park, down, down Beckton side. So near Asda, Asda in Beckton. So we used okay. to, there was a park around there. So we used to play all our games around the Sunday, Sunday games around there. And uh, I was a midfielder. I've always been a midfielder. I've never been a striker. I was always like a midfielder. Yeah, so I was like tall and lanky, oh, long oh. legs. <laughs> <laughs> so people used to call me Vieira yeah. back then. People used to call me Vieira back then because I was just tall, lanky, and just playing in midfield. And uh, yeah, and uh, that's where I first started playing football like, every week and week out in a club in England. And then after that, and one day now, I'll tell you the story. Yeah, how did I get? Do you want me to tell you how I got into football now, into the professional side? Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is a funny story. Yeah. I was at home, you know, us Africans, in it. When uh, obviously I come, I come from France. All my family is from France. And uh, one weekend, it was my aunt. I think it's my mom's sister. She came from France, and I wanted to go out. I wanted to pop out, but you know, our parents in it strict as hell. Where you going? You're always out. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. You're always out. Stay home. Go in your room upstairs. So it was like that. Uh, so my aunt from France came in. And you know that little celebration when you've got your auntie at home, she's coming from far, she's there with her daughter. So the family was a bit, we was a bit moving in the house and a music playing. As they were busy in the living room, I don't know if you remember the Cunningham houses where we had the living room downstairs and our rooms were upstairs with the toilets. Upstairs, yeah. <laughs> well, what I've done, you know my building, I don't know if you remember my building, it was the same as Wilson. Basically yeah. on the same road. So my house and Wilson's house, we could speak for the window. Yeah. yeah, we could speak for the windows. like. So Wilson now, I don't know how he told me about, I don't know, back then, but I don't think we had phones. We were too young to have mobile phones, even though back then there were no mobile phones. Wilson told me, TK, we need to go and play football. I've got, I've got to go to Luton. Please come with me. And I was like, Luton? And this time we're like 15. We're just about to leave school. We're like 15. I'm like, Luton? Where is even Luton? Where is that? He was like, it's out there, but Trez, I need you to come with me. Please just take me. Just come with me. At the same time, I see Loire coming to my window. Coming to my window, Loire, this is Loire. And I come to my window, goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going as well. I'm going with Wilson. We're going to the trial. So if you want to come, just come with us. I'm like, I can't go out. I'm not allowed out because I'm stuck in a room. 
You know what I'm saying? I can't go out. <laughs> so you know what I've done? Guess what I've done? What's that? I just put my tracksuit on. I went to my, my room and I just jumped out the window. Oh, and this time, Yeah. So this time, my parents are downstairs in the living room partying. <laughs> having a little celebration with my aunt. Yeah, and the aunt is here. So I've locked my door. What I've done, I've just pushed my door and I pretend like I was sleeping. So I actually jumped out the window from the back. Yeah. Joined Wilson and Loire. So we, this was like in the afternoon. I think my aunt came quite early. So I think the trial was like maybe in the afternoon. So we left quite on time. Jumped on the train, bumping the train as usual. Didn't pay for the ticket. Hey, oh, not many people know about them days, you know. Boy, back then, come on, 15, just not, I had this way, that's the only way we had to do it. Even bosses, <laughs> we had to bump the buses. <laughs> This is, it was hard times. It was hard times. This is this is being realistic. That like, every man who relate to this from East London. So bumping a train all the way to Luton. Now uh, bumping. I don't know if you've got a bus somewhere to the to the pitch. And this time, me, I'm not. I, I'm not on trial. It was their man's trial. I just went there just to support my guys. As I went there, we had a little match. It was, I think it was like a few, there was a few Luton boys from the under 15s and the uh, under 16s mixed. And the field trialist. So I was the only guy that was sitting on the side. As the game started, it was 11 against 11. First, they wore that to warm up. And me, I'm just sitting there. No kit, just my tracksuit. I'm sitting in a park. I'm sitting there right on the floor in a grass. And um, you have the game started 11 against 11. So this time now, Loa and Wilson on the pitch, playing on trial. And me sitting there. And then after, I think it was like 10 minutes, one of the boys got injured. That's the story. Someone got injured in the game and uh, they had no subs. There was no subs. And uh, I was the only one I was sitting as a youngster. I was sitting and I looked kind of right around that age group. So the manager just came to me. He goes to me, can you play football? Boy, guy, I'm like, I'm like shaking. I'm like, uh, uh. <laughs> he said, can you play football? I was like, uh, I can try. I can try. And he went, oh, just sorry, just come, just come. What position do you play? I was like, uh, uh. He goes, don't worry, just play, just play anyway. So they gave me the guy that was injured. They gave me his kit, his boots, his full kit that he was wearing. Yeah. But I, that's what happened, really. I just went on and I just, that was the story. And I, when I went on, just do what you got doing it. I was not, but one, once I get on a pitch, I'm not phased, though. That's the only thing about me. I yeah. could be phased before the games and stuff like that. I could be looking around thinking, oh, I'm nervous. But once I got on a pitch, playing around with the people that was there, that was my time. I think it was just meant to be in it. I scored like two goals in like the next 20 minutes straight away. Oh, and I was, yeah. when I was playing in midfield. Yeah, and uh, they stopped the game. Stopped the game. And uh, I think it was Paul Lowe. I remember it was Paul Lowe that was the manager of the under-16s of Luton. Paul Lowe. Yeah, he just came to me. He goes, well, what's your number? Have you got, have you got a house number? Have you got a number? I was like, yeah, I can give my parents' number. I gave him the, the address. I gave him the number, the address. I gave my dad's number or something, my house number. I think it was the house number back then. It was more of a house number. And uh, yeah. And we carry on the plane, the plane again. And I scored another one again. So I scored a hat trick in the game. Oh, serious. Then we had to jump in a weight on a home year after the game. Went back home with the boys that had a trial having a go at me. What the fuck <laughs> did we bring you, man? Why did we even have to bring you? <laughs> <laughs> Knowing Wilson, he was, he was probably going at it as well. You, know? you remember Wilson back then, how Wilson was? Angry. Oh, yeah, screwing up. But I think they was they was happy though. He was happy. It was a good time. It was them, them times we're young as well. We're not thinking like that really. Them that, times. That, them that, that goes to show that with, with football is like you can be so talented, but if no one can see it, you're not gonna get in, you're not gonna get anywhere. So it's all about the the, the right time. The right, right time, the opportunity. The opportunity yeah, has to be. Yeah. There. And the you, you've got you've got you've got to be there, and you've got to be willing to take that opportunity as well. Sort of a thing, yeah. yeah. So, what happened when you when you when you got home? What what was the situation you got, when you got home and when you went to Luton next? I'll tell you what. I got home. It must have been around eight, and this is really late for our parents. Like eight for us African parents is really late. The fact that they knew I was supposed to be in my room as well. So as soon as I got home, I got the biggest slap. That's that was expected. I was shaking before I get home. I'm telling you, shaking. I'm talking about shaking. When I'm opening the door, I was shaking. So what I always do, normally, I always, 
when I get downstairs, because my sister's room, my little sister's room is normally facing the door where we come in, the entrance. My sister's door, the room, her room is upstairs. So normally what I always do, I get little stones, bang out the window. When I'm in trouble, I always do that to her. I bang out the window and then she knows it's me. And then she will come downstairs. She will go to the living room. She will close the door. She will pretend so she can close the door. If my dad is going to be in the living room, she will close the door. And then she'll open the door for me. Then I'll just run up straight upstairs in my room. That was our technique back then when I used to be in trouble. I would call her. She would just open the window for me. She will throw the window. She will throw the the keys or something, then she'll just go to the living room first. She'll lock the door, so make sure dad don't see me. Then she'll come and open the door, then I'll just run straight upstairs. That was the technique, but that day didn't work. That um, day, my- that day, the fact that when she was trying to open the door, my dad just knew I went home. She trying to close the door, my dad just came and opened the door, just give me the biggest slap straight out the door. <laughs> crying and that. Then, go in the room, go upstairs in the room. So I went back in my room again. At this time, then my aunt saw it. She was still there because she was supposed to stay with us. She was like, oh, I'm going to bring him downstairs. He needs to come and say hello to me. You know what I'm saying? Bring him downstairs, come and say hello to me. That was the opportunity, you know? I come downstairs, all sad and that. Then I just had to talk. Oh, yeah, I had to talk. Then I just told him what happened. And when I gave him the letter, I gave him the little paper because the number, I had to write their numbers. I think I wrote Paul's number in his message. I said, yeah, this is what I had to do. I went there, I had to do that. This, this is the... And my aunt had to back me back then. She was the one that was backing me and my mom. Like, you see what I mean about you? You're always, you're always angry. Nah, nah, nah. Why don't you just let your son play football? He wanted to go and play football. Look what he's bringing you now. My dad was quiet. He was mm-hmm. really quiet because he didn't know what to do. You, I think he was emotional at the same time. And obviously, the positivity that it was a bad thing, the attitude that I've done jumping at the window and all that, it was really bad. But I think he could see my ambition in hand and I... I really wanted to do what I wanted to do. And I think he could read that from my side. I was really ambitious. I really wanted to, if I wanted to go somewhere, I'll just go. And if I wanted to back my friends, that's how I am. I always going to back my friends all the way. I'm the sort of people where someone's in trouble, someone needs me, I have to be there. So I've always had the mentality where I had to be there for my friends. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't for football. It was to back my friends, to support my friends, but I came up with the good news. So, so he was happy. He was happy. And then, Couple of days after that, the club now, they called me, they called my dad saying, oh yeah, I think that was a weekend. That was a weekend that, that day when the, the trial was, I think it was a weekend. And then the weekend after, Luton on the 16th, they had a game against Chelsea. So they was calling me all through the week on Monday, Sunday, they're calling my dad, yeah, we need Tress to come back. Da, da, da. And I was like, I was telling my dad, I was like, at this time now, that's when we just left the uh, we left school. We was getting prepared to go to college. So all of us Canning Town boys, we're talking about Shane, we're talking about the full Canning Town boys. We was working at Lexide in Burger King. Really? Yes, we had I'm talking about from Shane, the two Shane Campbells, all of us, Loa, all we had the full Canning Town working in mcdonald's Fabrice, <laughs> all of us who was working at burger king in mcdonald's uh, uh Bur- i think it was burger king in lexide all of us wow. was working there. so me now i was just happy working with my friends it was working and they put me on the till and everyone else was working at the back remember ryan i don't know if you remember ryan you don't remember ryan the big ryan chubby ryan no ryan was there working eating all the chips eating all the food that had a- <laughs> and for some reason they put me on the till at the front that's, that was the story. So me, I was just happy working, my friends. When we used to go work, we used to jump on that train from uh, Canning Town, jumping all the way to Lakeside Grays, all together, <laughs> bumping train as usual as kids. <laughs> <laughs> so me, now, me thinking, hold on, next Saturday, just playing against Chelsea, I'm like, nah, I'm not interested. And really, the reason why I was not interested in playing that game, because I knew... In Chelsea, they had someone play for that someone like Leon Knight. Leon Knight was playing for Chelsea back then, and he was he was the he was the figure of under 16s, under 17s of England. He was playing for England. He was playing for Chelsea. He was a big name. He was a massive name. He was like him, Joe Cole, and uh, Jermaine Defoe. I'm like me going to that game. Nah, outshining me out there, man. On a pitch, no one's gonna see me on a pitch. So I'm a flop. That was my that's the, that's the way I was thinking in my head, really. I was a kid, innit? That's the way I was thinking. I was thinking, nah, Leon Knight playing that game, me on the same pitch as Leon Knight. No one's going to see me. 
So I was like, Dad, no, nah, I'm not going to the game. So what they've done, they kept on calling, calling Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all those calling. And my young man come, kept on doing what he done, he came to pick me up. But this time now, the Saturday game against Chelsea, the week went. The week after that, he came to the house to pick me up. He actually came. Yeah, they came, he came all the way to my house in Canning Town and came and picked me up. Picked me up, took me to Luton. You know what? Pack your bags, we're gone. <laughs> so that's it. That's what happened. So I went, I went, that's how, that's how I got to Luton. I went to Luton. They put me on digs. As a youth team player, just signed as a youth team player, innit? And that was it. But at that, at that period, because I know I was a bit young, but at that yeah. period when you was, there was put, they put you in digs, I kept hearing that you kept coming back to London. You know what? Because, yeah, because uh, Luton is not really far from London. Luton is not really far from London. And I still miss my friends. See, me, I'm, I'm too much. I think that's probably another issue I've had in my, in my career. Uh, I was too, I'm too close to the people that I grew up with. I'm too, I'm a family person. I'm too close to family, friends and stuff like that. So I do, I miss people quick. You know what I'm saying? That's how I am. That's how I am. So yes, uh, we I had to stay in digs uh, through the week. But then, even back then, I think I wasn't the only one that kept on coming back. Because every time we play a game on Saturday morning, you know how it is, isn't it? We play games on Saturday morning. Saturday morning was like around 11. Kickoff was around 11. And by the time it was like two o'clock in the afternoon, we was free from Saturday and Sunday off. So after the game, I was always coming back. That's true. At the beginning, from the youth days, I was always coming back. But when I come back to London, though, it was party time, innit? Get back to my knowingness, meet my friends. What we got to do? What we got to do? In it? it was back then. Back then, that's what it was. I was just, I was thinking about friends, 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 friends. I wasn't. If I'm talking, to, if I if I would say I was hundred percent serious, then I'd be lying to myself. I was just okay. I'm playing football. Okay, yeah, but when I come back to my ends, it was just about me and my friends, innit? It was like that, really, back do then, reckon, yeah. Do you reckon? Do you reckon? Um, do you reckon the factor of that was you didn't really have like? Um, do you know that certain certain people, when they're going through the football journey at a young age, they normally yes. have someone who Mental. knows the in industry and can really push you and keep you straight up. Do you reckon that was the issue? That was a big issue. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's having a mentor, innit? That's basically that's mm -hmm. basically what you're trying to tell me. Having a mentor back then, we never had that. Especially people in our community where we grew up, they weren't really no one we knew. Like I'm telling you, for me to get to football at the beginning, I told you, I didn't know how to get there. If someone asked me, Do you wanna be a footballer? Yes, I wanna be a footballer. But by my head, I'm thinking, how the hell am I gonna get there? That's what I said earlier. So we had no one in the surrounding atmosphere that, that knew. I had to take you somewhere. I never knew anyone. You know what I'm saying? I never knew anyone. And in my community, back then, to get into a youth team, to get into the professional club, I was the first one, actually. I was the first one to get into the professional club. I was the first one to get into Luton. I think I think to get to the prof to get in, in the professional club, I think I was the first one. And then Lamana came after. The, the question was about a mentor. I never had a mentor. Yeah, that was it. That was very difficult because you need someone to talk to, to to talk to you through it. Someone has had the the experience about something, and um, to know what to do and to tell you what to do to advise you. Sometimes I never had that. So people that advise you is probably someone that's never done it, and someone that will talk to you. The only thing you will say to you, what can you say to you? Or oh, just be serious, you know, concentrate on your work. That's about it, really. But you never really. But then you look at the person. You're thinking this guy is not even in our world. He, he doesn't know anything. So sometimes I believe kids pay more attention to someone that's been and done it. If you're coming, for example, you can be a, I don't know, you can be a, you can be a, I don't know what what kind of a job you. It depends who you are. We seem to look at the person, and when the person's been there and he's done something. And you've you've seen what he's done. Anything he says to you, you seem to believe it. You seem to do actually. You want you want to you prove him wrong, and you want to do it because you're thinking, oh, he's been there, so he knows what he's talking about. So I never really, we never had that. And uh, I was the first, actually, the first in the community to get into a professional club, not pro, not to play for the first team. 
I'm not saying that. I'm talking about to get to get into a professional club. Because Luton was a professional club. And then I think the second person, don't forget Pierre Bolangi. Yeah. People forget about Pierre. People don't talk about Pierre. Pierre was there. The Pierre was, I think Pierre was Charlton. If, if not, yeah, he was a child. I don't know if he was a year younger than me or if he was the same year. I think he maybe was a year younger. I think Pierre was. Actually, I went to his we celebrate his funeral every every now and then. And I went to the last one and uh, I see all the Charlton players. It was great. I see his ex-manager. I see all these four, I see four tunes. I see so many players that came and paid tribute. It was great. So I can't forget Pierre. You know, I mean Pierre was one of us. Pierre Bolangi, he was one of us. And uh we can't talk about these kind of things we were forgetting Pierre. Pierre was there. Pierre would have been maybe what Lamana done or Lamana done. Pierre maybe would have been there as well if he was still there with us. Obviously, unfortunately, you know, so rest in peace, Pierre. And um yeah, Pierre was there. I don't know who got into a professional club first between Pierre and Lamana. I really can't remember. I can't remember. Or maybe Pierre was even maybe in that club before me. And, I don't know. I don't know. But to start getting there, I think it was between me and Pierre, maybe. People forget Pierre, obviously, because he's gone. So people don't talk about Pierre. They talk about me because I'm still here. But I think Pierre was first one of all of us. I think so, if I'm right. And then we never, but by, by, by that time, we never had no one. Back then, we never had no one. We never had anyone to, to mentor, anyone to talk to you, to advise you about anything. Nobody, nobody apart from your parents, your uncle that will meet you, that will talk to you. You know what? Just be serious. Just be serious. But you never had a mentor, really. It was very difficult. Yeah, but I now, think, I, now I, people I think look for, um, oh, sorry, sorry. I think for like, um, for, for back then, because everything was new, football. It wasn't that, that dream wasn't really a reality for especially people for our nation sort of thing, and especially in East London, the way East London was uh, back in those days. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, back then, yeah, don't forget where our background, when we're from Africa, people, not many people will understand the way our parents, they see football and uh, the way European people, they see football. Our parents don't see football like that. People around us back then, I'm talking about back then, people never used to see football like that. Now people see all this money, people see all these lifestyles, people see all this what the what the the all these uh, sites are doing for about football. People talking about football everywhere. Well, the way people see football today is not what people how people used to see football back then. Back then, our parents used to tell us, "No, don't play football. I don't want you to play to be a footballer." Back then, it used to be like that. People didn't want us to be a footballers. People didn't want us to be the way it is now. You had it maybe few, maybe the few that had a vision. But back then, like me, my dad, he never supported me being a footballer. He wanted me to go and do mechanics. Can you imagine me being doing mechanics, bro? Nothing to do with... <laughs> nothing against people doing that. But, bro, I had to be on the cars and that. <laughs> so I'm saying, bro. He was me to go to so he wanted me to go to college to learn about cars because that's what he used to do you know our parents back home is all about mechanics be electrician or be the, me being mechanics i couldn't see that happen i couldn't I, could, I just couldn't see myself being i couldn't see myself doing that it was not for me and back home don't forget our parents the way they used to fit, play football back home it used to be about juju and stuff you know that so a lot of people we had this thing in our heads where you play football, you have to go and touch this. You have to go and see this kind of thing. You have to touch this voodoo. You need to go and do this. It's the reality. We can't lie about these things like this. So in our community, it wasn't what the way it is now. Now everyone's supporting the kids now. You see, I see all these parents now. They're dying under the rain. They are there supporting the kids, watching the kids playing football. Bob, I don't know if you had that. P, did you have that when you went to QPR? Or did you have your parents coming week and week out? But no one knew I played football until I was... Thank you. You see what I'm saying? You see what I mean? So we never had that. Even your generation, you're four years younger than me, but you never had no one to support you like that. So you were just, you had to work but your way. The, the, the thing, the thing, the thing about uh, my generation is, yeah, we had sort of like you, 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 Lamana, you set the baseline. So we, yeah, for, so, for so we followed you lot. So you lot were our mentor. 
So what mm -hmm. you lot did, what you lot achieved and stuff like that. So when you lot were, were making mistakes, we were learning you, from your mistakes. Related from me, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're hoping you from see, me. Yeah, you, you see where I'm getting from? That's, yeah. that's, why, that's why our generation was were lucky at the time. It's like, I used to look up to Lamana because he was sort of still around uh, sort of like uh, the area. You was always out there. You, like, TK, I might see you one day, then I might not see you the next day. You was yeah. like here and there sort of thing. So that's why I didn't really uh, know much sort of a thing but you lot were the sort of like um the, yeah. the benchmark yeah yeah so we had no one in front of us to follow like you just said like you the mistakes i'll be making you can see from it even medi medi there's many times where even his dad spoke to me he's going to go and speak to medi because obviously what i've done the mistakes i've made i had no one in front of me to copy i had no one in front of me to copy that no one to Copy. So I was making the mistakes and learning from it myself. But you guys, obviously, it was still early for you guys. You only had maybe two people to look up to, even though we weren't really that good as example. <laughs> but at least you had someone to look up to, like someone to see. And obviously, me, me and you was live. We grew up in the same ends. We grew up in the same area. So you had, you could still see. You still had your eye on me somewhere. So yeah, it was a bit. It was difficult for our time. Our time was difficult. And that's why me personally, I'm talking about me, I made a lot of mistakes, mate. I made so many mistakes. I made so many mistakes that have changed me today. It's changed so much about the person I am today. I'm completely a different person. People that knew me back then, they'll speak to me today. They'll, they'll, they'll see completely a different person because I've learned so much. I'm talking about from the field, professionally, from friends, from friends, I've learned so much. It's crazy, like, and uh, I made a lot of mistakes, man. Going into the football, even when I was in the youth team, I don't know how I got pro, you know. Sometimes I don't know how I got. If it wasn't for my football, my feet off the field, I don't know how I got pro. But, but the thing is, on that note, let's deep, let's uh, go deep into sort of like um, Luton. Yeah, you you made your debut. You made. 21 appearances and scored three goals. You won Young Player of the Year two years in a row. Yeah. And you broke the youngest player to play for Luton. Yeah. That is that is mad. For someone who didn't really know yeah. football that much, that's mad. Like, I'm telling you, like, you see, it's mad, you know. It's funny how you told me that. I completely forgot about all these things, you know. But, like I'm saying to you, if it wasn't for my football, I don't think could have the much trouble I made, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not the sort of person that'll come onto the TV and uh, pretend like I was an angel. Oh, I was this. I was no, no, no. I'm not like that. Because obviously, the, these youngsters they're watching us now. I want them to know. I want them to see the mistakes I've made, the things I've done, and. It's only because I was working hard when it came on. When I came to work hard on my football, I was there. But when it, once I left the pitch, when I was out there, it was just me out there. My crazy head, it was just out there somewhere. And that's maybe because I never had a mentor. I never had, I was still coming back, see my friends, do things with my friends, bringing trouble to the club. I did that with Luton. I brought so much trouble. I brought trouble to the club. I didn't know what, what, what it was to be a professional. I didn't know what it meant. At the time, I didn't know what it meant. Everything happened so quick for me. Like, I started playing for the reserves and I was banging goals for the reserves. I was like 15. As soon as I came, that same year when I came on trial, the same year I go to the youth team, I go to the youth team. I was a regular in the youth team, in my team. I was a first year YT. The same year I was playing for the reserves already. I was like 15. I just turned 16. I was already playing for the reserves. The reserves was like, uh, you playing against people that are already 30. So it wasn't like today you got the under 23s. Remember, you know now I see it. Yeah. I think it's like the under 23s. Yeah. Back then I was playing against Ginola. Yeah, yeah. You're playing against Tottenham and you see there, you see Ginola that's that, yo, bro. I'm thinking, what? You look at the team sheet here, and you see now you see Ginola is there, you see all these Armstrong. You know, um, remember Armstrong that was playing for the yeah. first team for Tottenham. I'm seeing people like that. I'm like, bro, a couple months ago, I was I was I was working my Burger King. I was ready to go to college and maybe do mechanics. Know what I'm saying. So I was everything just happened so quick for me. 
And I was the, I was always a top scorer in a youth team, the league. I was a top scorer. For the two years I've done in a youth team, I was a top scorer. And yeah, so things were just happening. Then I was from a midfielder. When I got there, I was still a midfielder. When I was playing for Luton, my first year YT, the whole first year YT, I was a midfielder. I was an attacking midfielder, basically. So I don't know how I was just getting into the box and just scoring goals. I don't know. I, I can't remember how yeah, things just happened. You just you just do what you got to do. And then they thought, nah, this guy, we need to push him up there. And then I become a striker in the second year. My second year YT, that's when they put me as a number nine. And I was playing on the number nine and number 10 sometimes. But they pushed me up there. They just wanted me to stay up there because I just had this ability of scoring goals somehow. I just had that ability. So when things happened, it was really quick. I was actually supposed to play for the first team before my 17th birthday. So I signed my pro contract a year after. I signed my I signed my year. My, I was supposed to sign my pro contract a year straight a year after I came to Luton. So I was still, I was like 16. I was supposed to sign my year contract, but we was not allowed back then to get a contract early. So you had to wait yeah. for my birthday. Uh, you have to wait until you turn 17, then you're allowed to be a professional. So they have just had to make a way, make me wait, make me wait, make me wait, and then sign me the deal as a professional player. When I, On my birthday, that's when, because they couldn't wait, because there were so many clubs watching me. I had like West Ham. Because I remember we played against West Ham. Smashed up West this, this I'm talking about this team. The full West Ham was playing for England. I remember we played them a cup game. A cup game it was the final. We played them a home and away. I played a West Ham. I remember that game. Patrick was there. Fabrice was there. Um, everyone was there. The whole family, the whole East London was there. And we they, they had Joe Cole. I remember the first, before the game now, yeah. See when we warming up. When we was, as we warming up, I was watching Joe Cole. I'm warming up, but my eyes, my eyes was always on Joe Cole. No lie. So I see this guy now. He had his boots on. He had his Adidas boots. He had his Adidas boots. And he had he had the laces open, left them open as he was warming up. This guy, just doing, he wasn't even really warming up. He was just doing skills on that. Yeah. So I'm watching him thinking, okay, so I'm going to play against this guy. Now, hey, that's, this is the time where the whole England... He's talking about the future this, the future that. Yeah, he's, the yeah. only, he's the only guy in England that plays not as an English player. He plays with skills because in England, he was about get the ball, just bomb it forward, attack it, get the midfielder to bomb forward. He was just like that. Head the ball, don't bring it down and play on the side. Just when you get the ball, just bomb it forward. He was the guy that had the ability to play like a Spanish player. He's, as a young age, he just had to bring it down, twisting a few men, do a few things before. He just wanted to do a few things and stand out. So he always do that. Played against them. They had a top team. I remember they had Adam Newton on right back. This guy was speedy. This guy was fast. So we beat him. I think like we beat him 4-2 or something. Home and away. Both both legs had scored two. So I was mad at match with both home and away game. So I had a lot of clubs watching me. This time I had a lot of clubs. I had like a lot of clubs watching me. Especially in, I had like Charlton. Remember I had West Ham. And the manager told me after the game, came back to the came back to Luton, uh, came back to Luton the week after. Uh, the manager called me. This is the first team manager now. I was like, I'm a youth team player, but this is the first team manager told me, you know what? We need to sign you quick. We need to sign you quick because there's a lot of eyes on you. We know there's a lot of eyes on you, so you need to sign quick. Hurry up and turn 17. <laughs> You're still too young. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's that's what it was. Then, I started playing for the... I started playing for the first team, actually, when I was 17, yeah. How, how, was, that, how was that feeling? Uh, obviously, for for young kids now, that's a that's a very difficult um, transition from youth football into first team. A lot of people struggle with that and they can't do that. Yeah. How was that? How was that for you? Like the emotion and the physio, uh, how how physical the game was and everything. I'll tell you what. Back then, for me, I'm talking about back then. I was happy, but. It was just another day for me. It was just another day for me, really. It was... Everything was just... It became normal. Like, I'll sit down sometimes off the field and I'll be wondering, oh, okay, I'm really here now. I'm doing this. Oh, we're playing against these games. I'm you're scoring all against these teams. But... It was just... Hap everything was happening so quick. Week and week out. I didn't really get time to to be phased about a lot of what, what's going on. 
Because uh, really the hype that I had at the club, the respect that I had at the club already, people always knew. I always knew I was going to be a professional. I, I, I knew that straight away. That, oh, yes, I'll give my professional contract because I just knew that. From I knew that as soon as I came to the club, I knew that. And playing for the first team, some of the first team players, I was already playing with them in the reserves. And it kind of, and I always, I was always scoring goals for the reserves at young, really young age. And I, like I told, I told you, like we're playing against people that are thirty. You're like 15, 16. I was, I was at sixteen, I think, back then. I was playing for the first team, for the reserves. And back then in the reserves, you had people that were like 29, 25, big men that played for the first team everywhere. So I was kind of used to be around first team players a lot. And uh, they moved me because we used to be in a youth team changing room. And then you have to be in the first team changing room. You have to be staying with the first team changing room. And I moved to the first team changing room as well. So I was always surrounded with the first team players. So I wasn't really, it was, I was happy to be there, but I wasn't really phased that much, you know what I'm saying? And uh, my dream was always to stay there and go as far as possible with Luton, with Luton back then. But that didn't last long, fam. That didn't last long because, like I said to you, me, realised I was a professional, I didn't have that. Me to realise I was a professional, I swear to you, yeah. I realized that it was really late when I realized, you know what? To be a professional, there's a certain ways you have to behave on the field and off the field. And that's the reason why you need a mentor to be there. And that's the reason why I do what I do today. Because I don't want the kids today to go through what I went through. I know there's a lot of kids today, 15, 14, even 17. They're going through what I've been through. Mm. I know that. I know that for a fact. There's a lot of kids out there, especially from our ends, they're going through what I've been through. They don't understand what it is to be a professional. I didn't have that. No one told me what it was to be a professional. I thought playing football was just you play football and you get paid. I didn't know people watching you, people want to be like you, you're a role model, a young age, people watching you. I didn't know that. So I was just playing on the field. I'll do what I got to do. Once, I, once, I'm, once I'm out there, I'm just a normal guy where I'll just be causing trouble. I don't care. Anyone talks to me, I'll just fight. So it was like that. And all the trouble was coming back to the club. And I never used to understand why people go to the club. Why are they bringing it back to the club? So all these things, I didn't I didn't get I didn't. I got that really late, to be fair. I didn't understand that. So I was bringing a lot of trouble to the club. I didn't respect the club. I didn't respect the club. So, I respect um, the club on the, field, on the pitch. I respect the club. But when I, once I was off the field, I didn't respect the club. So all these trouble was... I was bringing the trouble back to the club. Everything that was happening to me off the field was coming back to the club. And me... Always arguing, why are they bringing it to the club? I've got to deal with this myself, but that was not the case because obviously I was the face of Luton in it. So, you the newspapers every day, every week, you was the newspapers because you was the youngest one popping up out there for the past two years. So, everyone knew who you were. You get to the town center, everyone knew who you were. So, every time you're making a little trouble, everything was coming back to the club. I didn't know that, I didn't get to understand that back then. So, you go to so, a point, yeah, sorry. Awesome. So, um you going through Luton, you going through a patchy sort of spell. Talk me through um, that sort of uh, move to uh, Bournemouth. To Bournemouth? Yeah. Yeah, the patchy was because I got too much trouble with it, so the club had to release me. <laughs> they didn't release me because of football, they released me because too much trouble. Yeah, but you you went from Luton, that's out there. Bournemouth, that's even, that's even further out there. I didn't go Bo because. I went to Bournemouth. Uh I think uh because we used to play against team these teams in they just knew who I was. They knew who I was. I used to play against these teams. I played against them in the reserves and stuff. Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe was the he was the player, he was the captain there. Oh. He was the captain of Bournemouth back then. So yeah, but I think all these teams that like, we just they knew who I were. So I don't think I had an agent that was there. He just called him, he said, you know what? Joseph Candle is free. Oh, yeah, yeah, game here, game here. It was just as easy as that. Straight. So, th this, this, this part, um, what's it called? This part was very important in your career. And uh, a lot of people who could be like a lot of teens that are listening to this, yeah, could really relate to this sort of part of your career. Because after leaving um, Bournemouth, which were in the league, you sort of switched into the non-league and went to Farrakh. 
what how why did you decide to go to the to Farak and what what happened in that sort of time I'll tell you what you see what you know when Leeds when Le uh, you know when Luton <laughs> can you imagine the club, they wrote to me. Actually, my contract was up. My deal was up at Luton. Me now, I don't know. Which, I don't know what used to be. What's wrong with me is like I just never believed it. Oh, you know when you just get used to the place so much. I feel like this was my house. You know sometimes when you're at home and you feel like I can make troubles, but I always can. I can always come back to my mom's house. No matter what I do, I've got my room there. I can just pop in and sleep. So for me, my head, it got like that. So I was thinking, no matter what I do, Luton will never leave me. They need me. It was like, I think in my head, I was like that. I was a kid. I was really like a kid. So my contract was up and I was still waiting for them to renew my contract. And I couldn't just not see Luton telling me to go because I knew what I was doing on the pitch. But obviously it was nothing to do with the pitch. It was what I was doing off the field. But back then I didn't understand that. So when they released me i still turn up can you believe that <laughs> <laughs> bro <laughs> uh, i'm like what do you mean this is my house are you telling me i can't come no more <laughs> it was like that for me that's how it was for me for me that's how it was so they released me. They didn't give me a new contract. And next morning, I'm just turning up. I come, I come, I come training. I'm turning up at the club, no contract. You're not supposed to be there. I turn up. And and the chairman is like looking at me and the manager's looking at me like, Trez, we've brought to you. You, you you've been, you know, you know, you know, on a contract here. We're done. And I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean I can't come? And I'm arguing. So that's how it was. And then I got to understand I'm really not wanted here. I left. Called my agent. Obviously, my agent knew already I was released, mm -hmm. but he was thinking, what the fuck did you go and do there? Sorry for my language. Yeah. He was like, what, what are you getting it for? You've been released. We're trying to sort you out of a new club. But even when he was trying to find me a club, I was not keen on that. I, in my head, it was just looting. And then it, it was what it was, isn't it? So I had to deal with it. And then, uh, yeah, then the call came where, do you want to go Bournemouth? I was like, okay, where is that? Oh, it's down south. And uh, uh, then I thought, okay, well, I checked a little bit and I thought, yeah, Jermaine Defoe went there. When I see that Jermaine Defoe played there last season, or two years before that, I think, Jermaine was on, on loan there mm -hmm. and he smashed yeah. it. That was the reason why I went there. So I thought, oh, yeah, Jermaine was there. He smashed So if Jermaine was there, he smashed it. Okay, cool. That means that place is decent. So I went there myself. But I was still under the shock, the fact that I left Luton. I'm not going to lie to you. As I went there, I was so used to, like I'm telling you, Luton was like my house. I felt like I can just come in, do what I've got to do. People, want, I'm always, I always felt wanted. So for me, it was my house. For me, going to a new club, I didn't adapt to it. I did not adapt to it. And uh, I was so far away from London, but it's not even about that, but it's just the fact that it was a different club. And I didn't, I didn't, it didn't sink into me to be in a different club. So I just felt like I was away from my house. So I didn't really settle. I was just like, I didn't want to be there, basically. I told you, I didn't want to be there. I felt like I'm not in my house. I don't, this is not my place. So I was just, I was there for a year, but that whole year, I was just not, my head went right. It wasn't right. That's when I, I realized I really left Luton. So my head was like, my head wasn't in place. So I'd done like a one year, then I just, because of that, I even left football. The reason why I went to Faro is because I retired. I retired. I stopped playing football back then. I stopped after after Bournemouth. I thought, you know what, football is just long. This is not for me. Like this is just. Pff. Let me just go back to my roads, innit? Let me just go back and meet my friends again. Do what we got to do. It was like that, really. Yeah, it was like that. And that's when, uh, my friend. I've got my my mate called Clifford Akarang. He used yeah. to be in a youth team. Cliff. He used to be my youth team. He was he used to be my youth team partner, as a striker. When I was playing like behind him, he would play up front. So we used to kick off together, sick. And people used to call us all oh, Andy Cole and Dwight York. It was like that. So he called me. He was like, Tres, what's going on? What are you doing? I said, bro, me, I'm done with football now. And this time he was playing non-league football. He was playing for Farrell. So that's what happened. So he called me. He goes, you know what? Come on, man. You can't be chilling at home. But this time I spent like maybe four months at home. I was just back in the end, just 
when you see me there, just just me. Yeah, so that's what happened. When he called me, he goes, you know what? I'll speak to the manager and I just just come in. So how I went there. Uh, how how was your your mind frame at that time? Because I know uh, from where you've been, especially at a young age, especially doing what you you was doing at that period, yeah, to yeah. then go into Farak, yeah, it must it must have been a culture shock. It must have been like like really hard to take. Yes, uh, I'll tell you. Uh, when I stayed at home, I started missing football again. I started missing playing because you know when you're when you're sitting at home, that's when you get the chance to start watching a lot of football. When you're when you're playing week in week out, you get tired of it. You can't be watching it all the time. Like me, I don't really watch football like that. Especially when I used to play, I never used to watch football. I watched match of the day. That was it. Match of the day. Yes, World Cup. Yes, maybe Champions League a bit. All these league games and that, I was not interested. Too much football. But when I sat there at home now every day, thinking about what's happened, this and that, this and that. Obviously, you got people talking to you. Don't get me wrong. I had people talking to me, telling me, Terrence, you're just wasting your talent. I had a few managers inviting me in clubs, into clubs and that. Not professional clubs. It was more of a, just people that I knew. I was just not into football. But the more you start watching it, you start watching it, you start watching your friends making it. You start watching your mates, people that you was playing with, people that actually look up to you doing their thing and you're thinking hold on i miss football again i need to go and play somewhere and when cliff spoke to me actually cliff when cliff called me and he spoke to me i was i was up for it i was like you know what let me just go and play where there's no pressure i just want to play football that's what it was i was like you know what forget all this professional all this stuff this stuff let me just play football let me just enjoy my life anyway that's what it was really so i went there yeah and the manager was cool. The manager was cool. I went there. I spent what? I've done two years of Farouk. I think I think that was good rehab for you, yeah, because you actually toyed with that league. Yeah. It, it mm. was it was it was for everyone to see that it was just too easy for you. You scored, yeah. I think you scored like sixty one goals in eighty three games at any level. That is mm. impressive. Yeah, it was not easy football at all because boy, well, hey, it was different football. I had to adapt to it. Non-league football like that, it was just people kicking, kicking the ball, kicking you. People thinking about it. they're thinking if I'm fighting this guy, I'm a good player. So if I'm if because obviously because I'm tall and big, I will always have this strength and looking big on the pitch. So when people used to come against me, they come in with strength. People will come with the strength. So they're thinking, okay, with him, the only way I can impress it was to barge him, to kick him, to jump on his back, all these kind of things. So that's what it was. For me, I find it difficult to play in that league. It was more difficult because too much of kicking and people just jumping on your back doing this list to impress. But then you have to adapt into it. I just thought, okay, so if this football is like this, let me play like that as well. That's what it was. So I changed the professional ways of playing into playing non-league, semi-pro, I mean, not non-league, but semi-pro. Yeah, yeah, so that's where it was. And uh, I think in two years, I became the top scorer in, in the history of the club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's what I said, yeah. You, you, you took the mick in that, in that league. You, you literally, it was a joke. It was literally yeah. a joke. I was playing, yeah. You know what? I was just playing and thinking, you know what? I'll come every Saturday, do my thing. Get my money from the manager, pay cash in hand, go and do my thing in it. It was just like that. It was like that. And I used to get on well with the chairman. His chair, the chairman was there. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was it was good. It was a good two years, a good rehab, like you would call it. So I even the first season, after the first year, I had a few clubs in professional clubs. It was interesting in conference, because that wasn't even conference, that was like that was Conference South. Conference South, yeah, it was Conference yeah, South. Back yeah, back then it was Conference South, yeah. So I had a few clubs in Conference South and in League Two. They were interested when I first, my first season, I think, yeah, far up. I was like, nah, I'm all right here, man. This is around the corner from my house. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, what? Driving 15 minutes, I'm back in the end. So for me, back in the end, back in the area, that was good enough for me. It was nothing to do with the money, nothing to do with anything. I was just like, I'll come on Thursday, do what I got to do. I had so many days to do other things as well. So at the time, it suited me. 
So I've done my two years. And then after that, I decided, I thought, you know what? Okay, cool. You know what? Let me go step a little step forward a little bit. So I went to Dagnum Redbridge. Dagnum. Yeah, why choose Dagnum? Dagnum, yeah. Dagnum was in a in the summer now. This we're talking about July. In the summer, I've gone to Dagnum. Signed for Dagnum. I think I signed one year or two. I can't remember. One year or two. It was John Steele. John Steele was the manager, the legend. The legend John Steele. So I signed in a, for Dagnum in oh, July. Start the season. Like we start the season. And uh, by, was it by October? I think it was by October. I went to Darlington. Yeah. Do you know what? At this period... I was following I was following your progress because mm -hmm. at this time it's when I um got into um the youth team at QPR. Okay, okay, okay. And I was following your progress. Yeah. I didn't understand that because you went to Dagnum, yeah. Yeah. Literally yeah. you you scored six goals in 12 games. Yeah. And then went to Darlington. I think they were in the same league or league they were same league. No, right? no, they were league two. Okay, so they're a league above. Yeah. And then you went there for the rest of the season or, or something like that. No, no, listen to this funny story. <laughs> What's this story? That's what I'm saying. August, I've come to Dagnum. I played like 13 games or something. I don't know. I played like a few games. I scored a few goals. October, I've gone to on loan. They've sent me on loan to Darlington. And then I went Darlington. I've done two months. I think I scored two goals in like eight games or six games. I scored two. Games. I didn't like it. This is was this now was the first time I've gone up to North. And I'm coming there. I'm like, what the hell is this? The action, nah, man. I couldn't hack it. I'm like, so John still was sending me to this place? Why? <laughs> so I was just happy. See me now, I was just happy to to be in an area not too far from my family, not too far from my friends, I can just enjoy my football. I was never about, let me go somewhere thinking about money, 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 money. It wasn't, we never had that. That's why even when I was in League Two, they were obviously they offered me more money. I preferred to come back to Thingy Conference. I was getting much more or less money. So it was like that. So then I decided one day now, I was like, John, John still, I need to come back, man. This loan, I can't stay here, man. I played, I played a few games, but this is not for me, man. I'm not at home, man. I need to come back. Is I really trust? This is League Two. This is the opportunity, you know. Look, Darlington, and that time Darlington, they had a massive stadium. Stadium, yeah, that that cool, serious. Yeah. That stadium was serious. It's like when I first went there, I got to the stadium and I looked at the stadium from the outside already. It was brand new, shining. The car park is massive. It's a proper settle, and I'm coming now. We're coming to view now the stadium now. And my, my, my agent was like, are you going to hack this? Can you hack this? Are you going to be able to handle this stadium? I was like, what? Well, just because it's League 2, I'm going to bang this out, man. And when I went now to have a meeting with everyone, with the players and stuff, me, I heard the accent. I was like, nah. <laughs> nah, I can't stay here. So I was there for a bit. It wasn't for me, really. Going up to North by that time, it wasn't for me. So I told John Steele, no, I need to come back to London. He thought I was, I was joking. I was like, John Steele, I'm coming back to Dagenham. I'm not staying here. So one day we played a game. We had a weekend off. Bro, I came back to London. I never went back. And this time, I, my, my, this time my loan wasn't even finished. Yeah. I came, so, so I came back by December times. I came back, or oh, two months after that, I came back to London in a weekend where we, I was supposed to go back to Darlington. Bro, I just never went back. This Monday now, I'm turning up at Dagnum. I turn up in Dagnum, boom, in the office with John Steele. He's like, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be Darlington. This is me, nah, I'm back. I ain't going back. So John, I told him how I felt. He was like, oh, okay, okay, cool. So I came back, played another two games. So I think they spoke to the club, told him, you know what, you just finished his contract, whatever, whatever happened. I don't know what happened. So he goes to me, okay, cool. I'll sort this out. I came back, played two games again for Dagnum again in a conference. <laughs> And then a couple of two weeks after that, he called me in his office again. He goes, Trez, there's a lot more clubs for you. So that's why I always put my hand up to John Steele. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Any other awesome. manager could have said, you know what? 
I need this boy to be at the club. I need his talent to be here. Especially when I came back after that first one, he, any of, many managers would just think, you know what, this boy wants to be around here. So if anything pops up, I won't tell him because I need him as well. So I might as well just keep him here and just, that's it. So two weeks after that, three weeks after maybe, he called me again in the office, go stress. Oh, we've got another offer for you. I think this one, you would like it. I was like, really? Oh, I said, where is it? What league is it? That's the first thing I asked. What league was it? He said, it's league two again. But this one, I've got two for you. And you just make your choice. But these two, I think you would like it. And you know what? The reason, I think the reason why he said that, because he was East, he was, uh, he was London. Yeah. Basically, it was Barnet and Leighton Orient. This time, Leighton Orient had a great stadium back then. It was new as well. Mm. Uh, in Leighton, it was brand new. So the first club I had to go and visit and speak to, it was Leighton Orient. So I went to Leighton Orient. I went to Mr. Hearn. You know Mr. Hearn, innit? Mr. Hearn is the producer, the promoter of the boxing. Innit? So I'm popping in his office now. This I think this is now. I don't know where this was. I'm popping in his office and I see all these pictures of Mac Tyson. So as, as we're having a conversation, my eyes are just like that. I'm just looking around. I'm looking at this guy's pictures. He's got pictures with oh, Mr. King, Don King. I'm looking at all these kind of pictures. I'm like, rah, this guy is serious. But I had this feeling where, I don't know, everything was good. The stadium was good. Leighton Norman was a bigger club. The settle was a bigger than, but, than uh, Barnet. But I just had this thing where, I don't know, I've, after I had a conversation with Mr. Hearn, I just had this feeling where, I don't know. I thought, you know what? We'll see what happens. And let me go and speak to Barney as well. I told my agent, you know what? Let me go and speak to Barney as well. So when I went to speak to Barney, the manager was Mr. Faircloth. Faircloth, bro. Legend. The first five minutes that I spoke to the guy, I just knew I'll stay here. It was like that. It was that easy. As soon as I met him, as soon as I spoke to him, the first five minutes, I just thought, I told my agent, you know what? Game over. I'm not going back to, I'm, I'm not getting Leonorio. And at the time, Leonorio was like top of the league. They was like top five in the league. And like Barney was like struggling a bit. I was like, nah. And the, and, and the stadium of Barney, you know, is like, that. Like, yeah, it's a hill. hill. Like, yeah. After, even after all that, I didn't care. I was like, you know what? I'll play for this guy. Basically, I went Barney after the conversation I had with Mr. Furcloth. So when I went Barney, yeah, it, it it must it was it was a good move for you at the end of the day because yeah. obviously yeah. after after going from Barney, you had the, the maddest move which even raised my eye. I was just like, yeah, TK is back because yeah. you, you've had an up and down career. Then this is yeah. when I thought, you know what? I remember I was telling someone, um, I was telling someone back in the area. I was just like, TK is back with this move when you went to Leeds because. I remember we played uh, Leeds Swindon and then I saw you on there and I was just like, bro, you're lucky. This is a good club, man. Because talk, yeah. talk me through that, that Leeds move, man, that atmosphere and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you know about the trouble that I had when I was in Barnet as well? No, no, no. Really? No, what happened? <laughs> That's when I went inside. Oh, you went jail? Yeah. Yeah, talk, talk me through. Talk me through that. I thought you wanted to jump that, but I thought, no, it's important for me to say that. If the kids are going to be watching us, that's the reason why I, I'm, I always want to say that. I don't want to, I don't have to jump my interviews without saying that bit. Because that bit could have been my darkest side of my career. But why? Because I followed the wrong path, innit? Even then, I went around. I was, uh, I was, uh, I was 23 already back then at the time. I was like uh, 23 when I went to when I went to Barnet, I was 23 years old. So I was kind of a big man. I knew what I was doing. Still, I was still following the wrong paths. I was following the wrong people. I was still doing the wrong stuff off the field. I still didn't really learn my lesson. I still didn't, didn't even at that age, I didn't really learn what it was to be a professional. I didn't really sink it in properly. That's why I always want to mention this in all my... In if I have an interview, I have to mention this. I can't jump this bit. I was doing the wrong stuff. And uh, it got me locked up. It got me locked up. And uh, I always put my hand up in it for what I've done. It wasn't like... Obviously, when I say that, people might think, oh, what do you do? What do you do? Guys, don't worry. It was nothing to do with... <laughs> it was just driving offences. That's what it was. 
it was not oh I had some kind of a, I've done something madness to someone. No, no, no. It was just a driving offenses, but still, I was doing things where I was, I was, I knew what I was doing. So at the time, it was not right. It was not right. As a professional footballer, you need to know what to do on the field and off the field. And that's why today I talk to a lot of kids. That's why I work with a lot of kids. That's why I'm a mentor to a lot of kids. And that's why a lot of kids, especially I choose kids that relate to me. They know where I come from. And the lot of kids, they want to they hear from me. They want to sit down and listen to what I say because I always say the truth. And I always want the best of the kids out there doing it or in whatever they want to do in the future, that to put a mind into it. And your surroundings is very important. Your surroundings, you need to know who's around you. You need, you need to know who's around you, who's going to support you and who's going to be there. You need to focus on your job, focus on what you do. If you want to do it, if you want to follow the wrong path like I did, Obviously, on the pitch, I was when I was working. I was always I was decent. I was not the best, but I was decent. People recognized me. I was always like, it was good enough. I could have been good even better if I did concentrate, if I did focus a lot on my football instead of mixing football and the outside lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so that's what happened. And I got locked up. I, got, I played. I scored on my debut. Banger against Joe Hart. Joe Hart was in goal for Shrewsbury. There was a long goal kick, a goal kick from the keeper. Long one. I chested it from long one. I chested it from nearly just past halfway. It was like a 30 yarder. I just banged it. Bottom corner, Joe Hart was in goal. That was my debut for Barnet. And I knew this was a time. It was a time for me to come back hard. And then, yeah, so the madness happened and I got locked up. When I got locked up, it was the end of the season because I came by I think it was December or January after I left Arlington. So I went there. I went. I, pl- I came back to Dagnum. Then I went to. Then I went to Barnet. I came by January or January or Fe- or something like that to the end of the season. But by that little spirit period of time, uh, when I was getting into trouble, I knew I knew already I was gonna go in. I knew I was gonna go down. I knew it, and uh, my agent knew it, and it got to the point where at the at the end. I was so I was so stupid that some of the fans, some of the police that were stopping me, they knew who I was, they knew my car, they knew where because I was I was always driving the same like you're getting training the same road every morning, you're getting training the same road. So people actually knew who you were. You get through the pass, the same police station that you go past, they actually knew who I were. They knew they see me in the newspapers every week, scoring goals. They knew who you are, they knew who you play for, they are your supporters, they even come to the stadiums. So I go to the point where even the policeman will stop me and tell me, you know what, Tres, why are you doing this? You need to stop. Why are you doing this? You've been banned from driving for six months. Why don't you just wait and wait? I was just thinking, nah, this policeman, he's a supporter, innit? This policeman, what is he going to do to me, innit? He's not going to do nothing to me. What can he do to me? I was like, I had, I had this mentality like that. And then boom, when I went to court, they locked me off. They locked me for, I was, I was, I got, I got done for eight months. So I've done four months. The four months I've done, it was basically, they put me, they had to wait. I like the, To be fair, the way they worked it out, it was perfect for me, where they waited to the end of the season. The last game of the season, when they knew the season was over, they sent me to court after the game. And then they sent me to jail. I knew I was getting jail. So I'm coming, I'm coming in with my suitcase. I'm coming there ready. I was like that. Yeah, I was ready. I was ready. Okay, so what happened? Yeah, when I went in, so I went in for two for four months. I've done, I missed the, I, I missed my holiday, my summer holiday. Then I missed the preseason, and then I missed a few games at the beginning of the season. That was four months. That's the way they worked it out. So when I came out, that's that's when I realized who I was. That's when I realized what it was to be a professional footballer. It was me when I came out of jail. You know what I'm saying it was that time. That's what I thought. You know what? It's either I carry on like this. And I might not get an opportunity like this again. And Mr. Fairclough did look after me so well. The club, Barnet, my hands up to Barnet. Because to do that, to keep my contract, after all that trouble that I caused to the club, all these newspapers, Barnet football, all this and that, they still kept me and my contract was still up. So my hands up to Barnet. I big up to Barnet, man, for what they've done for me, man. Thanks a lot. And then, boom, came out of the season, that season. I was at the, at, the, at the beginning of that next season after that, I thought, you know what, this is the time in it. I was bang, I just banged it. I just worked my socks off and I just banged it out. I didn't give no time to any team, any defender. 
I banged it out. And that's when the season starts. By the time we got to November, that's when the move to Leeds came. But it wasn't just Leeds. I had Crystal Palace, I had Wolves. I had the full championship, the full championship. And the, I don't know premiership, but full championship clubs, full. Wow, and obviously, <laughs> Leeds just came down from Champions League football yeah, two years before that. Simple as that. That's the reason why. It was the biggest club that was there. The biggest name, the biggest stage in championship of all the clubs that was there. So I thought, you know what? Forget who's going to offer me work. Because obviously, there's some other clubs that offered me more money. But I just wanted to go to the biggest place. I just wanted the biggest name. Do you know That's what? what I mean. At that, at that time when you was at Leeds, um, I, I looked at your team because we, we played against you when I, at Swindon. Swindon, yeah. After the game, I came to your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked, I looked, I looked at your team, and I just thought you lot had a good chemistry, man. Good, yeah, good yeah, accommodation yeah. of players. You're yeah, all yeah, friends. Yeah. You, you yeah, know, yeah. all friends at that time. That Leeds yeah, team, yeah. that's all. That's yeah. why you lot did so well with regarding your promotion Proper. and stuff. Did, Proper, did, yeah. did that settle yeah. you? Easily, easily, man. That was the chemistry I had in that team. Is like that's another team where I felt home. Of all the teams I've been at, apart from Luton times, when I felt this is my house, the second team after that, it was Leeds. I felt this is my house. I used to come there thinking this is my yard. Now I'm saying, no, I was coming there. This was my house, actually. I could have my bed there. I would sleep there. No one would tell me nothing. It was like that for me at Leeds as well. And um, yeah, the chemistry I had, we had like Beckford. Do you mean Beckford? He's the, actually the person that welcomed me so much at the club. When I, when I first came to the club, He's the person that found me the, uh, the apartment. We had like my, me, my building and his building, he was like next to each other. He's the one that got me the apartment there. So he was like, he was my, my roommate, everything. I settled in well because of Jermaine. And uh, we had Seb Carroll. We had the whole, we had Bradley, Bradley Johnson. Bradley came after though. Brad, when he came after, done his thing. Done his thing. He came from Northampton, he done his thing. We had a we had a serious thing. We had Johnny House and all these guys. They went to play for, they all went on to play in the Premier League. After that, and then we had Max Grado that came after. That came he came after though. After we played you lot, Max Grado he went on to play for Avery Coast. Avery Coast and no, forget no. it. You know what I mean? There's so many people I can mention that. Like, yeah, we had a team, mate. We had a team. We had a serious team. But you and, know, um, we got we, like from your good performances for Leeds. Um, it show it opened up a door for you internationally. Internationally, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, you went to uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, how 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 did that come up? Uh, how did that come to uh, to, to 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 be a, a, a situation where you sort of chose Republic of Congo, then France, then England, then how did you get on? Sorry, I have to mention Seb Carroll. You know. Sorry, I could not go past Leeds without mentioning Seb Carroll. Seb Carroll was a legend. I mean, this guy was a smart bro, Mr. Assist, Mr. Assist. Yeah, so that move came. That move came. I think people used to talk to me. People used to talk to me a lot. Lamana used to talk to me. He used to tell me, you know, Trez, you need to come Congo, man. You need to come Congo. He was them ones about coming to Congo, but not to play football. It was just to visit the country. You always used to talk, talk, talk to me about, you know what, Trez, hey, come Congo, come and see the country. You know, but me, that was not really a thing for me to come back. So I don't know. I don't know where it was. And then that, that how did that come? I think people used to talk to me, you know. People used to tell me about, you need to play for your national team, you need to play for your national team. Then they called me. I think the coach back then, I forgot, you know what? Sorry, but I forgot his name. He called me on my phone. I don't know how he got my number. I don't know if he was Lamana. Maybe it was Lamana. Maybe it was. I never got to knew to know that. I never got to know. But maybe it was Lamana or but Lamana never told me. He never told me that like, he spoke to to the manager. Wait, I don't know. That's just me just thinking. Maybe it could have been he could have been Lamana. Or but then I remember when it was officially there. Where I was gonna, I was in the team. My name was in the the twenty one. I don't know if you got twenty two players or something like that. 
when it was officially there, my name was there. Then I got a lot of people that called me after that. I remember Tonton Urbain, Tonton Rubin, sorry, Tonton Rubin, that's, uh, that's Lamona's uncle. He used to speak to me a lot. He used to talk to me a lot. Oh, that guy. Tonton Rubin, he used to big up Tonton Rubin, man. He used to always to talk to me. This guy was a legend. He was always talking to me, always giving me advices. Trezor, don't give opportunity to defenders. When you get an opportunity, just bang it. He was, he was, he was, because he was really into football. And uh, Tonton Rubin always supported me. Even when I left football after my injuries and stuff, he's always supported me, man. He's always been there. He's always been, he supported me a lot, Tonton Rubin. That's Lamano's uncle. Yeah. So when I got there, yeah, it was funny. Because me, I'm not going to lie to you, I never used to watch Congolese Federation football. I never used to watch it. I never used to think I would play for Congo. I never had ambition like that. I never had that. Oh, one day I'm going to play for Congo and this and that. I never had that. So when the time came, the time came. I didn't even know who some of our legends, I don't even know them. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to tell me to mention some of our legends, like where back in it, back in it, 30 years, 50 years ago, names and I don't know many names. Apart from the ones that my dad, people that everyone knows, maybe Kabongo, Mutubile, all these kind of names, but if you talk to me, if you have to tell you 10 names, I don't, I wouldn't know. I wasn't really following our federation like that. But I knew a few players that was playing in my era. That's the difference. I knew a few. Because you know us Congolese uh, people, once you start playing football, people, you know your name, they start singing your name, they start singing in songs as well. You know, all these kind of things, they start singing you, singing your name in songs. So we get to know a few people from songs and stuff. And you know, oh yeah, he plays football. Oh yeah, he plays that because of the songs and that. So when I got there, that's when I see all these faces. But the people that I knew, I knew before I got there, I knew they was there. You had Shabani Nonda, this guy. Well, what more can you say, man? What more can you say about Shabani Nonda? This guy has played Champions League football. This guy was a top scorer for France, I think three years in a row. He was playing for Monaco. So this guy, he's actually one guy that I was I had my eye on watching the way he plays, watching what he was doing, because I used to watch him already before. Well, that's, this is way before. I always used to watch him because I used to watch French football, obviously, because I support PSG. So I used to watch him all the time when he was playing for Monaco. And I knew, obviously, I knew Lamana because Lamana, that's a cousin, you know, that's a family. Um, Lamana, Lua Lua. So, yeah, that's a family. So, obviously, that was just normal. And then I knew, um, I didn't know many people in the team, but I settled in well. I settled in well because when I got there, funny enough, people kind of knew who I was. Funny enough, people kind of knew who I was. <laughs> like I said to you, people in our community, when people know you, all these musicians, they start singing your name. They start singing your name, you get to know them, you know, they start singing your name in songs. So some people, they knew my name, but they never met me before. But they knew who I was because of the songs when they say my name in song. They knew my name, but they never knew who I was. So when they see you, straight away you feel related to the person because you feel like you know the person because you already know his name anyway. So when they see me, it was it was all right. It was all right. I felt welcome. I felt welcome back home. We had Yusuf Mulumbu. Yusuf Mulumbu, he was there. He wasn't one of the... He was kind of a new like me as well. And we had Zakwani. You know, Gab. Gabriel Zakwani. Me and Gabriel actually made our debut the same day. We traveled the same day. We was in the same hotel room. That was our first day together. Yeah, we came the same day. My debut was the same day. I had uh, all these Matumona room. We had the Yamba Yosila. We had all these legends for Congo now. And we had um, Bokani. Jimmy Asim Bokani, he was there. That's when I met him. That's when he just was playing for Under Lake and doing his thing. He's smashing it for, for Standard de Liège. So, yeah, the team was... It, we had a decent team. We had a good team, actually. I would say a good team. But nothing much was happening back then, man. It was it was funny, man. It was different to the European football. I was so used to this, our football, English football. This was the first time. Now, come back to the question that you asked me earlier. When I came from France, what, how did I see the difference with football people? I didn't see it back then because I was not about football when I was young. But now, when I went back home now to play for the national team, the football is completely different to the English football. Completely, especially compared to 
because I played in every level. And I played conference. I played, I played League Two. I played League One. I played Championship. The only thing I ever played is Premiership. I never had a Premiership. So yeah, that's what happened. And after that, I played a few games. I played like I played three games. You know, I only played three games. I played three. I scored one. I scored one, but I don't know why in this Wikipedia they never wrote it. I scored my little one-one. You know. <laughs> So it was a good experience. Then I started getting all my injuries, and that's when my all my all my injuries start coming. In 2010, I started to get these crazy injuries and stuff. And uh, that was it, really. Then, then I, uh, my injuries were so bad. I was out for nine months. I came back to England. I was injured for a long time in uh, Leeds. I had a great treatment, but the treatment took about six to seven, eight months to come back. After that, I, I think I forced myself to come back early. My hamstring, my hamstring was completely ripped. It was completely ripped. I had a snap in my hair. I heard a snap. But when you hear the snap, that means that your, your your leg is completely ripped inside. So it normally takes longer. But me, I forced myself to come back so early because I wasn't playing many games by them times because the new manager came. I don't know. He never really was feeling me. That was his reasons. And uh, I wasn't playing many games. Simon Grayson, he didn't play me many games. And after that, I decided to leave Leeds, innit? I just thought to myself, you know what? By this time, obviously, I was an adult now, and I knew what I was doing. I knew, like, you know, when my time came to leave, I asked them to leave myself. I was asking Leeds to leave. I left. And I went, I went with my injury. When I went to Spain, I decided to go to Spain. I just thought, I thought to myself, you know what? Been in England for a while, played in England for a long time. Everyone knows me in England. I wanted to go somewhere where nobody knows me, where I can just do my thing, come, walk around, do what I've got to do, and nobody knows me, so I can start a new life, fresh. And I thought, I think, I really think in Spain, I could have done so well if I was fully fit. I was free. This club was in a championship. It was like a mid-table club, Abrefete. Abrefete was like, it was a mid-table club. It was really good. I was welcome. And all these stories I heard about Spanish people, this and that, maybe yes. But I didn't get to see it in my, in my, my own eyes. I didn't get to experience it in the club. I did experience it off the field, though. People, whoa. People, whoa. But in the pitch, on the pitch, in my club, I prefer I never got to see nothing. I was so welcome. I was so happy to be there. I was really happy to be there to play, but my injury was really bad. My hamstring, it wasn't really healed yet. It wasn't really healed like that. So I forced myself and I ripped it again for the second time. As it was coming back strong, when I went there for the preseason, I ripped on my second day again because I was forcing my, I was forcing to impress because it was my first, my, my new club. So I really wanted to get my place early and impress myself. I ripped it again. And I'll tell you what, anyone will tell you, last time I was reading some newspaper and somebody was talking about the treatment you get in Spain. Somebody, I don't know, I read it somewhere. Some footballer, professional footballer that I played in Spain. And he was saying, you know what? The treatment you get in Spain, you come to England, people can, you can get healed in what? In two, three months. But in Spain, it will take you maybe nine months or maybe 10 months. Because in Spain, the treatment is really, really bad. Okay. Yeah, so that was it, really. Then I went to Spain. That was after my injury. 2011, I forced myself to go to the different places, but I had to stop the career. So my career stopped. I was 27. 27 only. 27 only, you know. I was 27, 28. Sure, sure. That's, um, that was That was a crazy insight of your career and... I guarantee, um, I'm 100% sure that there's over 50% of the youngsters, especially in the London area, who will go through or who are going through what you went through. And for, for them, like listening to this will be a good education and good sort of like a, uh, something to, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, listen to and um, you'll probably you've, you've you've given so many good advices for them to carry out in their own journey, and I really appreciate you doing this. 
I uh, wish you the best of luck in uh, your community stuff that you're doing with the young kids um, mm -hmm. in in France, in England, and uh, in Africa as well. Enjoy, and, yeah. um, uh, I hope you had a good Christmas, and uh, I wish you a happy new year. Yes, bro, bro. You too, you man. I'll catch you soon, man. Thanks for having me, man. No way.